wondering where I am, okay? I'm sitting in my car. I'm over here at the airport uh, trying to make a journey over to Tobago. And, um, you know, the flight situation is a little bit irregular with all that has been happening. So I thought I would do the session uh, here from the car in the nice ambience. <laughs> of a mobile studio so good morning to you welcome 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 to victory place international morning devotion at victory place international we honor god we celebrate people we change lives and we aspire to impact the world Victory Place Trinidad is an affiliate of Victory Place in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Under the sterling leadership of Bishop Clive Porter Sr. And his dear wife, Lady Sharon Porter. And we are so glad to be connected to this great ministry. And we thank God for all of you. Amen. Bless the Lord. We've been having some technical challenges for those of you who locked on to the Bible study last night. I mean, it was a serious challenge. The internet was very, very unstable and bumped us off about twice. And so we had to forego the, sec the session last night. But we give God thanks that we can meet um, again and we can connect this morning. And if you are with us for the very first time, please indicate. Let us know so we could give you a good welcome. Marlene, good morning. Monica, good morning. Manuela, good morning. Mary, good morning to you. God bless you. Celeste, good morning. Joy Samuel, good morning and welcome. Yvette, good morning to you. God bless you. Maxine, good morning. Good morning. Blossom, good morning to you. God bless you and thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm doing so many technical things here this morning. Sis, good morning to you. Brendan, good morning to you. Um, Florita, good morning to you. God bless you and welcome. Uh, Deborah, good morning. Laverne, Bernice, good morning and welcome. Glennis, Glennis, good morning to you. Herman, good morning. Sherry Ann Romeo, Good morning to you. Marlene Grimes, I see you. Alice, good morning. Alicia, how are you doing, my friend? Good to see you. God bless you. Aries, good morning to you and welcome. Bless the name of the Lord. We are so happy that you could join us for another devotional session. Amen. And we're trusting God to help us. We're trusting that the internet platform will be stable and user-friendly for us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> Amen. Tracy Ann, good morning. Everybody, I want you to welcome Tracy Ann. This is Tracy Ann's first time. Amen. Let's welcome Tracy Ann to our devotion this morning. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Uh, Janice, good morning to you. God bless you and welcome. Amen. Janice, uh, Janice Phillips, good morning. Janice Lake, good morning. Welcome, 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 welcome. 
Glory to God. We give him praise <clears throat> and we give him thanks. Bless the Lord for his goodness and for his mercies. Amen. And every time we have somebody with us for the first time, we, we have to, amen, let them know that we appreciate them. Certainly they could have been doing something else with their time. So we give God praise. So Tracy Ann, on, beh on behalf of all of us here, amen, at Victory Place International, we welcome you and God bless you. We hope you come back and see us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Melissa, good morning to you. Uh, Camelia, good morning to you. God bless you. Amen. Welcome. Bless the name of the Lord. <clears throat> well, praise the Lord. Um, last night we started, we were going to, our theme was family matters. And like I said, major, major struggle last night with the internet and all of that. It's the first time I've had that situation where the internet just made an executive decision and bumped us off in Jesus' name. But we give God praise and we give him thanks for the opportunity. Amen. Bless God. My sister told me just say, leave that up. Just one, that's, that's just a day and, and it happens. Amen. And so we are here this morning. Sue, good morning. God bless you. And I want to, to, to begin to, to re-engage what we were talking about last night. Amen. Samantha, good morning. We started reading in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28. And also chapter 2 from verse 21 to 25. Collis, good morning. Marissa, good morning. Yvette, good morning. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28. It says this. Bless the Lord. And God said, let us make man according to our image. Amen. Or in our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. Amen. Over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Glory to God. Amen. Dillis, good morning to you. God bless you. Kathleen, good morning to you. Chapter 2, verse 21 to verse 25. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took a rib out of his ribs and closed it up and closed up the, the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. And brought her unto the man. And Adam said, Now this is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they both were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Amen. Birchill, good morning. Pastor Margaret, good morning to you. Pastor Dion, good morning to you, sir. God bless you. Atalia, good morning. Louis, good morning. Michelle, good morning. And welcome all of you. Family matters. Glory to God. And we, we were saying last night that it is, it is an important conversation to have. Because of the attack that has come against the family in more recent times. The, re the redefining of family. Um, the re redefining of gender. Um, give, it, give it, leave man alone. Man will redefine everything. Amen. Bless God. But we are thankful that there is a, there, that there is a point of reference. We are thankful that there is a biblical position. Susan, good morning. Amen. That God has set. And for those who choose to follow God's guidelines will reap the benefits thereof. Amen. Marilyn, good morning to you. God bless you and welcome. Amen. And we, we have to appreciate, bless the Lord, 
that in the midst of the craziness, in the midst of the confusion, it is important for us to put a biblical perspective on this. Amen. Because we have to continue to inform, educate, and encourage those that fall in our purview. As parents, we have to continue to encourage, inform, edify our children because they are in an environment of confusion. Amen. We must not be afraid. We, 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 we must not be, um, you know, uh, appear as if we, we, we're losing it. We must not be petrified. We must not be confused. We must be confident. Amen. Lady Sylvia, good morning to you. Amen. And continue to speak the truth as the Lord will have us. So we need to know what the word of God says about these matters and continue to keep that ever before our face, regardless of what is taking place. You must understand that we are in a world system that is governed by the devil and those whom he has set up to help him run the space. He's called the prince and the power of the air. Amen. So we have to contend with all that the devil is doing and remember in the last days the bible did prophesy and say that evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse that they are going to invent new things that they are going to be perpetually engaged in evil you do remember jesus also said in matthew chapter 24 25 i can't remember exactly that the last days will be just as it was in the day of noah and if you ever read, read that account with Noah, there was evil continually. The Bible said the very imagination of the human heart was evil. So men continue to imagine evil things. They are going to invent evil things. They are going to have evil philosophies and evil plots. And they are going to implement that in the world system because this is the end of the age. Pamela, good morning. But in spite of all of that, we that are the light of the world, we must continue to shine. And that means we must continue to put forth the principles of God. We must continue to stand by them. We must continue to teach them. We must continue to preach them we must continue to explain them to those who want an explanation in jesus name so this is why i believe that this this uh, um, message about the family is of paramount importance in this day and time that we live Amen. Bless the Lord. And in order for us to put it into perspective, perspective, I think the first thing that we need to do is to look at the legitimacy of the family. The legitimacy. Where does this family get its point of reference? Amen. Who invented family? Glory to God. Amen. Bless the Lord. And, and, and there's where we want to go. Amen. The legitimacy of the family. Judy, good morning. God bless you. Amen. I think we get the legitimacy, legitimacy of the family by beginning as we read in the book of, of Genesis 1 from 26 to 28. The family begins, my brothers and sisters, with what I call creatures of deity. Creatures of deity. This is what legitimizes the family. Creatures of deity. Amen. Remember, and God said, let us make man according to our image and our likeness. Glory to God. God said, let us design man according or after our image and our likeness. Now, notice how God, how it starts there. There are some people that dispute um, the Godhead and all of that. Amen. The word God there is Elohim. Elohim is, 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 is in the plural form. Okay. So this, conf it, 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 it keeps the context that God, that God exists. There is a triune, um, triune being or plurality in the Godhead. Because the word Elohim, which is the Hebrew for God as translated here, is in the plural form. And notice what it said. And God said, let us make man. Bless the Lord. So this is a reference for plurality in the Godhead. Amen. And notice what it said. Let us make man after our image. The word image in the Hebrew speaks about representative figure. Representative figure. Amen. It is the same word that is used for an idol. You know people who, who a lot of religious people, they have not seen God. They claim they worship a God. So they design, they build some kind of idol and they say, this is God. You understand what I'm saying? And, that, and that, the reason why God is, 
God abhors idol worship so much because these things that are built, they are built by men. They have hands, they cannot touch, eyes, they cannot see, feet, they cannot walk and all that. So God is upset that men will equate him to stones or things that they would have built. You understand what I'm saying? So God says, let us make man and the man must be a representative figure for us in the earth. That is what the word image means. So God is saying, I don't necessarily have to come down and walk the earth every day. I'm going to put a man there. And when you see this man, this man is going to, going to be my representation. So when you begin to walk with God, when you begin to, to serve God, you are God's representation in the space that you find yourself. If you are in a family and you are the only person that is saved there, you are God's representation in that family. If you are at, a, at the place you work, if you are the only Christian there, you are God's representation in that place. Bless God. In your environment, in your space, glory to God, you are God's representation there. So God said that let us make man after our image and likeness. The word likeness means resemblance. So image is representative, representative figure. Re, uh, likeness is resemblance. Amen. Bless the Lord. So we know, we know that God is a spirit. He's not a physical being. Therefore, the resemblance cannot be a physical resemblance. It must speak about the man that God is creating has to have some of, uh, not has to have God's characteristic traits. Thank you, Jesus. Representation. Amen. Bless the Lord. Characteristic traits, uh, resemblance. Now, in the village that I, I, I used to live, it's a village called Bethel in Tobago. Some of my some of my father's peers, amen. Sometimes when I walk through the village and so on, amen, they don't know my name. But they will look at my face and they will say, That is Nolly Baines' son. Or they will call me Nolly for that matter. They don't have to, and that's how senior people will do it. And they are able to identify me because of the resemblance that I have for my father. Glory to God. This is critical. People are able to identify you as a Christian. They are able to identify because of the resemblance of God that you have in you. Resemblance meaning the characteristic traits that emanate from your life. The way you live, the way you behave, the way you treat people. Amen. Bless God. People are, can say and should be able to say this is a representation and a resemblance of God. Glory to God. Amen. We have to resemble God in the way we behave, in the way we think. This is why as a child of God, you find that we can make decrees. Amen. Bless God. Amen. We, we, we have creative ability. Bless the Lord, you give us a chance and you turn off all the distracting devices and give us a chance. We can create stuff. We have learned that from God. That is a part of the resemblance. Glory to God. Amen. Bless God. Our ability to love people, our ability amen, to look after the welfare of people. These are things that we have learned from God. These are characteristic traits that we get from God. So we are God's representation. Amen. And so the, the, the responsibility of the child of God is to always represent God, both resemble and represent God. So in this way, amen, as we give legitimacy to the family, the family is built up, amen, by creatures, built upon creatures of deity, both male and female. Amen. Both male and female. Glory to God. Notice the Bible says God created man after his own image and likeness. And man is used in a generic sense because he said male and female created he them. So, amen. As we give legitimacy to the family, amen. The family is built on creatures of deity, also creatures of dominion, both male and female. God told them dominate the fowl of the air, the beasts of the field, the fish of the sea, it is critical that we understand that because God said this twice. Human beings are not supposed to dominate one another. Amen. 
you are not supposed the man is not was never god's intention for a man to dominate a woman it was never god's intention for a woman to dominate a man anybody that you see practicing domination on another human is contrary to scripture I'm going to say it again. Amen. We know sin has come and messed up everything. And there's been a lot of, of ills, a lot of misguided, misguided teachings and so on. A lot of uh, 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 a flawed philosophy of men. But we have to correct it in Jesus' name. God told them, what you must dominate are creatures beneath you. Amen. Birds of the air, fish of the sea, for, uh, uh, animals of the field. Bless the Lord. Human beings must not dominate one another in Jesus' name because the both of them, male and female, are creatures of dominion. It's very important. Creatures of dominion. Glory to God. Amen. So we see some things and we learn them and we begin to practice them, but they are not necessarily correct. For instance, because sin has come and sin has affected family, affected mankind in general, you find there are tremendous ills in the forming of human philosophy. So a young lady grew up in, grows up in a house. Okay, your home is supposed to be the first and the almost last bastion of your forming, your philosophy, your, 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 your strength, your strengthening, your image on life. That is supposed to be shaped by your home. The place that you live, amen, the place that you live is the place and the people around you, whether they are your, your blood parents or whoever the most influential adults in that environment is going to shape how you conceptualize life and how you form philosophies in your life as you go forward, amen, in the journey. So if... A young lady is in a situation where the mother dominates the father. Okay? And sometimes these things run in families. That domination goes back to great-grandmother and all of that stuff. It is something that runs in the family. The young girl coming up is going to see this and will believe and think this is the way a woman is supposed to treat a man. That is what is going to be uh, registered in her mind, generally speaking. It's going to be registered in her psyche. That's the way to behave. Glory to God. It's going to be there. And so she grows up. Amen. And, and, and the man that she looks for. And, and oftentimes, oftentimes, these women gravitate to a particular type of man. Amen. Bless the Lord. They gravitate to some, some calm they are not necessarily weak, you know, but they're just calm. They're docile in some cases. There are some that are weak as well. But these strong, dominant women gravitate to men that can be dominated. Let me put it that way. Okay? So you find that as a part of the challenge. On the other hand, there are men. Young boys grow up in the same in an environment where they see the father treating the mother a certain way. And that might go back to the grandfather and the great-grandfather and all of that stuff. Amen. Bless the Lord. Now, you must understand some of these things are curse that run in the lineage at times. Eh? Glory to God. This young boy's image of females is being formed and shaped by that information. How a man is supposed to treat a woman. That is what he's learning from what he's seeing in that environment. In Jesus' name. And he grows up. Grows up with a perspective about females and about a wife and a girlfriend. Based on the point of reference he got from the most influential place in his shaping. Amen. Bless the Lord. And he's going to believe that to be the way. He's going to believe that the only way that can change is if new information and new experience powerful enough, amen, and credible enough to make his change his mind, change to make him change his mind, comes into his spirit and he accepts it. Amen. So I needed to say that, okay, it is never God's intention for man to dominate woman and woman to dominate man. So the, the, the family begins... It gets its legitimacy on creatures of deity, creatures of dominion, and creatures of destiny. God bless 
them both male and female and god said unto them both male and female be fruitful and multiply amen this speaks about destiny as well so it is not just talking about multiplying as having a whole lot of children and so on it's it's fruitfulness goes beyond that so there must be personal development personal expansion personal promotion all of that so both male and female are expected to develop as individuals and also to develop collectively in jesus name glory to god are you there with me so the man is not supposed to be daft nor is the woman both of them are creatures of dominion amen when they were created they are both created equal equal that is why god said god bless them and god said unto them amen bless god amen be fruitful multiply and all of that good stuff amen bless the name of the lord amen and it is important for us to, 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 to say that, that God is the one that start this family business. It is built, amen, on creatures of deity. And God created them both male and female. Any and everything else is a contradiction. So even though it is prominent in the world, even though it is, it is being legislated in the world, even though it is it is it is it is it is being philosophized regardless of what they are doing in the world this is the world is controlled by the devil therefore the devil will continue to forge his agenda but what god said remains true and must be the point of reference for those of us who believe and those under our purview we must teach this we must preach this in jesus name male and female we know them by virtue of their design glory to god and the problem with the uh, gender distortion the problem with uh the distortion of the institution of marriage and so on comes from sin and once sin comes into the picture amen everything kind of goes haywire glory to god but we have to stay with the truth. We have to stay with the original reference. If we're going to bring some clarity in Jesus. I know, I, I mean, we can. there's much we can say about the whole gender issue. There are people, amen, that, that say, for instance, in the male and female issue, we are told from a biological standpoint that the, the difference of chromosomes, amen, the chromosome, chromosome imbalance, can um uh, contribute to what we see as somebody that has a male body but has feminine uh tendencies you understand what i'm saying okay and vice versa we understand that that happens all these things occur because of sin there are animals that are born with both male and female um organs Amen. Hermaphrodites, they are called. There are some humans where you have male and female organs. These things have come as a result of sin. You understand what I'm saying? So some people, what they say, they have been born that way. So they just accept it and they attribute it to God. I want you to understand how you are born because we are born in sin, shaping in iniquity. You cannot attribute that to God. Sin is responsible for every defect that ha occurs in the human body. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Let me say that again. Every defect that occurs in the human body is as a result of sin. So if you are born blind, for instance, if you are born um, with a mental issue, there are some children that are born, uh, uh, they are called special needs children, and so they're born like that. They are not responsible, but sin is responsible for that because sin has distorted everything. So a normal human being is supposed to have a certain chrom chromosome balance. That is the way that you are able to determine male. Well, in addition to the physical appearance, the physical equipment of a male is different to that of a female. 
Bless the Lord. And from that male-female reference, everything else that has male or female physical things has the same kind of design. So, for instance, there's a male plug and there's a female plug. If you want electricity to flow, you can't have two female. It just don't work. You have to have a male and female. There's, if you're using a microphone, there's a male and a female jack. You understand? If you put the two males together, you get no amplification. You put the two females, no. You have to have male and female. So the understanding of male and female comes from the biblical reference of how God designed the man and how God designed the woman. Amen. The man, bless God, is designing a way. Amen. And the woman is designing a particular way. Amen. Bless God. I'm trying to help you. Amen. The best way I could. But we know that. However, we have seen that there are people that can be in a physical body, male physical body, but have female tendencies. And there are some that are in a female body and have male tendencies. Bless the Lord. And that comes as a result of sin. You remember in John chapter 5, is it chapter 5 or chapter 9? Lord Jesus, help me here. There was a guy that was born blind. And the disciples said, Lord, who did sin to cause this? And Jesus said, it is not that anybody sinned necessarily. They were asking, is it the deeds of the parents that caused the child to be born like this? Jesus said that's not the issue the issue is that just that the glory of God must be made manifest in this life so the, the, the thing is if there is some deficiency in your birth physical deficiency and you have come to the place of realization and you choose you want deliverance from that that is possible through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen let me also say this because a person has feminine tendencies does not mean that they are homosexuals. Amen. I'm saying again. Because somebody has a feminine tendency doesn't mean that they are lesbian, are practicing lesbians or, or males or practicing homosexuals. Or that, that, amen. Homosexuality is learnt behavior. All the experts agree it is learnt behavior. It is, it is error for people to say that they are born like that. So God endorses homosexuality. That is a contradiction. God cannot endorse homosexuality. Because he, he, he speaks against it in his word. Alright. But what we are saying is. That there is a there are provisions for those who want to change. If you want to live your life the way you are living your life. We cannot force you. But the Bible gives provisions for change. If you so desire. In Jesus name. Amen. Bless the Lord. So God in his initial creation created both male and female. Glory to God. And that was the basis for the family in Jesus name. Bless the Lord. So we did, we, let's move on. Let's move on. We, we just dealt with legitimacy in the family. Let's move on to leadership. Leadership in the family. Glory to God. Amen. Leadership. Hallelujah. Right. Now we know. That there is equality in creation. Both male and female were created equal. Both the male is a creature of dominion. Also the female. Both of them are created as leaders. So the man could lead and the woman can lead. Because that is how they were created. Stay with me here. Created that way. The woman is not some brainless um, servant to follow the man. No, sir. The woman has her own ideas. She has her own aspirations and all that because she was created as an independent thinker, as an independent human being with a mandate of dominion and destiny on her life as well. Amen. The man also, bless God, of course, he is created. They are both created equal. So we must say that. As we're looking at leadership in the family now. There is equality in creation. The second point is. But there is exception in charge. Equality in creation. But exception in charge. What do I mean by that? There is exception in relation to duty. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Duty and function. We know. God created both male and female. But God created Adam first. 
And then God caused, as we read in Genesis chapter 2, a deep sleep to come upon him. And God created the female out of the, of, out of the male. Okay? Bless the Lord. And God brought her to him. And Adam called her a woman and all of that kind of good stuff. And all of that. Amen. Bless God. <laughs> but it is important for us to understand that the man had a leadership function in the family setup. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm going to say that again. The man, in terms of his charge, his responsibility, he was the one that God will come to, that God looks to for leadership in the family. Before the man even got a woman, okay, if you read Genesis chapter 2 there from verse 15, God created the garden and all of that kind of stuff and God put the man in the garden and God gave the man responsibility. God knew what he was doing. You know? God gave the man responsibility. If he is going to lead, he has to be a responsible man. So God put him in the garden and God said, I want you to dress and keep it. Genesis 2.15. Dress and keep it. The word dress. It really means to labor, to work, to till. So God gave him responsibility. Amen. To keep, to guard, to watch, to protect. So God said, I'm putting you in this garden. I've designed the garden and everything. I'm putting you in there. You must till it. You must take care of it. Because God knows he's going to send a woman in a while. And the both of them will have to work together to accomplish purpose and all of that in Jesus' name. So God creates a responsible man in Jesus name bless the Lord and God now gives him so responsible man and a right hand a right hand woman let me put that way a right hand woman you know they say you have a right hand man a right hand woman God creates a woman and God creates the woman as a helper God said same Genesis um if you read from chapter 2 for 15 to 17, God says it's not good for the man to be alone. There is no help for the man. Although the man is responsible, what I have for him, he needs help to get it done. Glory to God. So I'm going to create a woman. Though she's a creature of dominion, she is to assist the man. Come on here. Amen, 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 amen. She's an assistant. Help. One who helps. That is why, my brothers and sisters, no woman must go with any man who is not going somewhere. Let me say that again. I know it's it going to be rough here, kind of ruggy. So buckle up. No woman must go with any man that is not responsible, that doesn't have some agenda that is going nowhere. Because every woman that comes into a man's life is supposed to come as a helper. You do not need help if you're not doing anything. If you're not going anywhere, you don't need help. So a man who has no agenda, has no direction, has no business going and look for no wife. Amen. Because as soon as a wife reach, a wife is coming to help. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. She's coming to help. And if, she's, and if she can't help you, there's going to be frustration and these things this is some of the things that contribute to the brokenness of a lot of relationships and frustration and heartache. I'm going to say that again. Brothers. Amen. Bless God. Let me talk. I'm talking to the ladies first. Do not, if you're going to, you're interested in a man and all of that, he may be super um, handsome. He may have all the qualities and all that kind of stuff. But you have to dig, drill down and find out what is this man's agenda. Is this man responsible? Does this man know how to take care? Amen. Dress, to protect, to keep, to watch over. Does he know how to take care? You got to find out all them things. Before you get all emotional and mushy mushy and all that, you got to find out whether the man is going somewhere. Because you will be frustrated if you go with a man to help and he's doing nothing or going nowhere. In Jesus' name. Amen. By the same token, brothers, you should not go with any woman that does not have the capacity to help. Come on here. Let's talk. Let's talk. What we find, because of how men are designed, our brains, you know we are men. We get captivated by what we see. 
So we see the hips and we see the lips and we see the fingertips and and we see all the lines, you know, these design like the road to Maracas Beach. We see all that. And that is what we gravitate to. But my brothers and tell let me tell you something. These things will change. You see that? These things will change as 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 we all know. Amen. After one child, everything just kind of, you know, things can change. Amen. Bless God. Amen. I'm speaking in general terms, of course. Okay. So there's got to be something more tangible than the physical appearance. Don't misunderstand me. Physical appearance is critical for a man. But you could have a woman that looks good and thinking good too. There are some women, my brothers and sisters, you must not get married. Some women that you should not get involved with because they are gold diggers. They have no assistance to give and they've, 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 they've been messed up in all that. You have to make the choice. You have to find a woman that is going to help you. It is a travesty when a man has an objective, amen, bless God, has a desire, a goal, a dream, gets hooked up with a woman that keep pulling him down. Amen. Bless God that wants stuff. She just wants stuff. She just wants stuff. Adding nothing. Amen. Adding no sensible uh, point of view to where you're trying to go. In Jesus' name. Man, and remember, nobody holding no gun to your head, brother. Amen. Bless the Lord. You are making the choice. I'm saying that the man for the relationship to work, Okay, for the relationship to have the best chance of good, amen, and success, it must begin, of course, with the legitimacy, understanding of the legitimacy, and understanding the leadership in the thing, in Jesus' name. The man is not to dominate the woman, nor vice versa, but they must, they, 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 they must understand the compatibility issue is that the man has to be going somewhere. He has to be a responsible individual. And a woman must come into that space to help him to get to where he's going. And the man in his search must be looking for a woman that he knows can help. Can assist. That has her own mind. You understand what I'm saying? That is expeditious. She don't have to be, you know, an intellectual genius. But she thinks. She's a contributor. She's a supporter. In Jesus' name, bless the Lord. This gives the relationship a tremendous chance at success. Let me say this. Eh? The Bible says, for this purpose shall a man, a one single whole, leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife. A, amen, a wife, bless God, whole, single, bless the Lord. Now that's an important thing. Because whole simply means a man that understands his responsibility. A man that has a relationship with his God. A man that is not looking for a mother. A man that is not, you know, vacillating all the time. He has his act together. A man that is not overcome by emotional issues. A man that doesn't have credibility issues. When I say credibility, a man that doesn't have, that understands his center. A man that is sure about himself. You understand me? Amen. Bless God. Sin damages everything. Sin damages everything. So you have men, amen, that are that are looking for mother figure and, and all of that kind of stuff. And so they pick a wife not understanding this is a woman that is thinking. She's not your mother. She has come to assist you. Amen. Bless the Lord. So it's important for us to understand that. That a man has to be whole. You understand? You have to have your act together. You cannot be intimidated by everyone and everything. Amen. Bless God. This is why wholeness is a process. And a man is not ready for a wife until he, has a, he, he is as whole as he can be. In Jesus' name. Whole man. And then, by the same token, a whole man has to be or has the propensity to gravitate to a whole woman. So you cannot be looking for some father in a man. You can't be looking for some sugar daddy. You can't have had... The woman must have so much emotional baggage that you bring all this baggage to the thing. Amen. Bless God. You have been hurt in your past and you've never been healed from it and all. Listen to me. Before people come together, we have to try and work out this stuff. 
You gotta try and work all them stuff before you come together. Even in your time of courtship, you gotta try and work on yourself because marriage itself is a brand new entity that requires tremendous attention. It's like a baby. You have to give attention. So you don't want to add more baggage on that. You understand what I'm saying? So the, the marriage is spent, so much time is spent on therapy. You trying to give therapy to the man and the man trying to give therapy to you because of the brokenness that you have. It, 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 it wears the marriage down in Jesus' name. So you need a whole man that will gravitate to a whole woman. So you have a whole man and a whole woman. A man leaves his mother and father. Amen. Bless the Lord. And that is not just a physical leaving. leaving eh? That has to do with a psychological leaving as well. Because that's some, there's so much we could see. And also men leave their, father, their parents' house only physically. And they get to the house with this. They get to the new situation with a wife and comparing your wife's cooking to your mother's cooking. Brother, if you want to live long, don't do that. Eh? In Jesus' name. <laughs> if you want to live. <laughs> Amen. Bless God. If you want a chef, find out all them things before you get married. Find out all them things if the lady could cook and all that. And if you know you are better cook, teach the woman and all that. Amen. But no, you know, criticizing the woman food and saying that your mother used to cook it better than that and all kind of foolishness. You looking to you looking to get Clorox in your food in Jesus' name. So don't leave your mother's, leave your wife's house and keep going and eating by your mother and everything you're gone by your mother. No, leave physically, leave psychologically, leave and cleave to your wife. And some of you ladies, some of you ladies, some of you brothers, amen. You leave your mother's house. Don't always be running your mother's house. You understand? Instead of you be handling the man, taking care of the man, you always think, amen, bless God. You always in your, you, you, you understand, referencing and pressuring the man and, and telling the man why you not behaving, why you not moving like daddy and all that kind of stuff. Those things, my brothers and sisters, this man is not your father. We have to understand that you have to shape and, and build a new relationship for yourself. And it takes work. In Jesus name glory to God it takes work it takes work some of you women they're so so hard amen to please you fuss about everything and all that kind of stuff amen you want everything you won't give the relationship a chance to grow amen bless God so that you can accomplish things together in Jesus name all these things put enormous pressure on relationships and we ain't we ain't reached the children yet we just talking about the man and the woman in Jesus name bless the Lord it is critical. A whole man will gravitate for the most part to a whole woman. But if you have a half a man, a whole man, leave his mother and father, cleave to a whole wife, you end up with a whole relationship. But if you have half a man who will most times gravitate to half a woman, you end up with half a relationship. In Jesus' name. Are you understanding? You have a relationship that has tremendous problems. It's always pressure. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, amen. My brothers and sisters, now we said, let me go back and say this. Though the male and female, are, there is equality in creation. There is exception in charge or responsibility. The man is leader. And we know that. Because after Eve, now God spoke to Adam, eh? God spoke to Adam in Genesis chapter 2. You read that from verse 15. God instructed him as to what he should do and what he should not do. What he should eat and what he shouldn't. So Adam knew that up front. You understand? God spoke to him. Eve comes along. Amen. Bless God. Apparently Adam was not in the space when Eve started having a conversation with a serpent in the um, who was who really was the devil. You understand what I'm saying? And that's another issue. Eve, Eve was a brave woman. You know, talking to a snake for that extended amount of time <laughs> yeah but uh, of course as creatures of dominion eve was a boss because she is supposed to have dominion over snake and all that so i understand that perspective amen bless the lord i joke with my wife sometimes and she she gets upset with me amen that 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 you know you know you women how you how you're sharp with your mouth and you will say this and say that and say that but when you see a cockroach in the house you're calling the man when you see uh, uh some kind of lizard in the house you're calling the man well, don't talk about snake. You're calling the man. 
And I said to her, but I don't understand why you're calling me your creature of dominion. <laughs> Listen, that's a bad joke to make. Eh? That's <laughs> it's not a good joke to make when your wife or girlfriend is afraid of an insect or an animal. That is not a good joke to make. I'm just telling you. <laughs> but the point is that Eve is having this conversation with the devil. And the devil, you know, kind of skewed the information that God gave to Adam. When the fall took place, okay, they went, they violated the word and, and whatever, whatever. The fall took place. God comes in the garden. God does not come to Eve. God does not come to Eve. Why? God comes to the man who is the leader, who he designated in the family setup to be the one, the head. Not the dominating one, but the one that holds the position of leadership. Let me tell you something. Because somebody holds a position higher than you, don't mean that they are more powerful than you or they are different to you. Or not. It's just a matter of position. Amen. Bless the Lord. It don't mean that you don't have valuable ideas and thoughts. It's position. God set it up this way. That the man will be the leader. We will go to the New Testament when we continue with this. Amen. We're almost done because, uh, you know, we won't finish it today. Bless the Lord. Amen. But when it comes to the setup in the family, God is setting the order. God comes and say, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, you know the story. You know, I was afraid and all that. God, and then God said, well, what do you understand? God knew, but God was questioned. God is letting us understand that in the family setup, there is an order that God has. So let me say that again. Both the male and the female were created equal. Both the male and the female are creatures of dominion. They are both leaders. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But in the setup of the family, one must carry the responsibility as the head, the leader of the family setup. Because children will come into the mix after a while. Amen. The leader is the one that is setting the goal and all of that. The wife comes to assist in getting the goal. And the assistance doesn't mean that she's just a brainless follower. She's a person that interacts and engages the situation. She's able to fine tune. Help means uh, assistance in clarifying at times in amen bless god in in reinforcing crystallizing because women are designed as creatures of detail men miss a lot of detail and so women are the perfect balance for the man where he tries to where he's trying to go in jesus name it is frustrating it is depressing when you are in a relationship and you don't have any leadership the man ain't going nowhere. Or, blessed God, you have a man going somewhere and a woman not helping him to get there. Bless the Lord. It is frustrating on both sides. So we are saying this will help us. We need to look at these references and areas where we are deficient. We must be prepared to work on them. Sin messed up everything. Sin messed up everything. Alright? Sin messed up man's philosophy. Man's psychology. But while sin messing with that, your body, your physical body, your, the development of your body and the needs of your physical body don't change. Amen. Bless God, a man will still want a wife. A man will still want a woman. A man will still want to have affection and all of that. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless God. So, when people come together, it is important that we clarify why you're coming together. There has to be a kind of wholeness. Of both male and female to come together to form a dynamic union. I'm, I'm about to close this segment. But there are, there are some different types of marriages. And I'm just throwing this out here. Amen. And, and those that I remember. And there, there are a few others. But let me see what I remember. There, there, is, there, is, there is what you call the total marriage. Total marriage. Total marriage is when you have two people. Like the same thing. Eat the same thing, dress the same way, everything they like, everything. They, they, they are total, total marriage. So if you and, 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 and somebody upset, them upset to the people too. They oblivious to the thing, they are not even a part of it. Total marriage. A total marriage is a boring marriage. 
boring. It lacks innovation. Amen. Frustrating. You see? Amen. And I'm speaking in general terms. So you almost appreciate that there is an exception to everyone. But you have to be total marriage. Then you have you, you have some you have you have a next thing they call a placid marriage. A placid, placid, which means it's, it's just flat. Just flat. It's like it's like the Gulf of Paria, <laughs> you know, on, on most days. Flat. Not a ripple. That again is another boring marriage, boy. Oh Lord. Nothing ain't happening. Just going along. No spark. You understand? No life. Placid, 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 placid. And then you have another one. You have another one called, uh, they call them married singles. Married singles. This is where the two individuals have their own agenda. Ain't nobody, we ain't coming together to work on nothing. Amen. Man have his own agenda. Woman have her own agenda. They have their own car. They have their own room. They have their own everything. They have their own plan. Married singles. They only meet sometimes for conjugal, conjugal activity. Amen. But it is not really important. They, won't, they have their own life. Married singles. That, of course, is not what God intended. Then you have the turbulent marriage. Turbulent. Where you fight for everything. You fuss and fight for everything. Fuss and fight over the toothpaste. First and fight over the wares in the sink. First and fight over coming in the car late. More than your shoe. First and fight. Turbulent. Turbulent. Amen. Every day is a first and fight. It's like the Middle East in your house. In jail. And the neighbor know that's a part of the thing. Amen. I'm talking about Christian people. That is not what God intended. Amen. And then you have an extra. You have, you have what they call the eggshell marriage. Eggshell. Eggshell. This is where you have to step. You have to step cautiously. It's almost the marriage is like a minefield. You have to step. You have to step. Because there are touchy areas in the lives of each individual. So it has some things you can't talk about. The minute you start to talk about the man's ability to make decisions, he gets all you know emotional and vexed and upset and all of that because that's an area of deficiency. Means just had to tell him that he, you know, he, he shouldn't drop his clothes here and shouldn't drop that he gets upset. You understand? And the woman, the minister said, I tell her, you know, you know, you must be more on, on time, be a little more expeditious. That is a touchy area. That's a touchy area. You start telling her, she putting on a little weight. Now, let me tell you something, eh, brothers. If you have to tell your wife, and the more information you give, the better off you will be. But sometimes you have to be selective in what you do. Amen. Bless the Lord. And you have to know sensitive areas and you have to be cautious how you approach that. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. But getting the information over is in the best interest of both parties without it coming across as if it's an attack or if it is... And, 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 and see, some people are in such a place that the, the skin really so thin that, that meaningful, genuine information is seen as an attack. And that is when that requires clinical attention. Amen. So you have that kind of marriage as well. You have, your, you have, you have the business marriage. The business marriage. That is when people come together just for business. Amen. Bless God. So that they won't lose the house. So that the children will have, a, you know, uh, um, the, the, the children will have some kind of stability. You know, property or whatever. You understand? It's not, not no love. It's just it's just it's a business relation. Glory to God. And then you have the duress marriage. Duress, forced marriage. So the girl, the lady, got pregnant. You understand? She got pregnant, and you feeling guilty and all that kind of stuff. So you get married without learning, without all the other important things. You know, you get married, but you're not whole. You're not ready. And all that kind of stuff, you get married. So those things impact the fallout, the brokenness that we see in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless God. Sometimes some, some women use their pregnancy, they use their, their body and trap a man. Uh, you understand? Bless God. They trap a man into getting married. And then there are some men who think that every woman is a target. Every woman is a target. You understand what I'm saying? Bless God. So you have this. And all these things come as a result of sin. And I'm sharing all these things so that we can all look at our relationships. And the point of reference is that there is the thing called the dynamic marriage. What is the dynamic marriage? 
The dynamic marriage is the marriage that is referenced here in Genesis chapter 2. Where you have an individual man, individual woman. They, when they come together, they are not subsumed in each other's personality. So when you see the relationship, you're not seeing a Terence Baines male and female. Or you're not seeing a, a, a Jane male and female. They are two dynamic individuals, have independent thought, but they come together to form a union. They are, are su su satisfied with themselves. Let me say this now. They are not looking for a partner to fulfill them. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. This is important. They are not looking for a man to fulfill them and let them feel whole. Their wholeness is with their development and the relationship that they have with their God. Thank you, Jesus. Wholeness, your development, your relationship with God. So it's not that you cannot survive without a man. Thank you, Jesus. So, 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 so if a man leave you, you ain't gonna become a basket case and drink toxic substance and want to jump in front of a truck. The devil is a liar. You have your own life. You can live without a man. And vice versa. Amen. Brothers, you have to be so fulfilled that you don't need a woman to, to fulfill you. You understand where you are called call to and you have a relationship with your God and that helps you to crystallize where you're going. So you don't just need a woman to make you, you know, to fulfill you. No, sir. God does that. So you have two individuals that understand it and then you, you make a decision to come together to form a dynamic union. What you could not, in terms of quantum, accomplish by yourself, you are able to accomplish it together. So by yourself, you could accomplish stuff. By yourself, you could be fruitful because that is your dominion call. But when you come together and you put the two guns together, it's a double barrel that the world is facing. You will be exceptional in Jesus' name. This is God's idea. The things that I'm sharing with you, my brothers and sisters, is not to intimidate you and make you feel. No, no, no. Information is to help us so that at least you could have a point of reference. This is where you're trying to go. It will make you change. Change your attitude. Change your behavior. Change your expectation. Relationships are beautiful. Amen. Marriage still is a beautiful institution. It has, amen, we the individuals are flawed and our willingness to change is, um, is that is really the critical issue. But as information comes, you must be prepared to change in Jesus' name. Glory to God. My brothers and sisters, I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to stop. We will continue. Amen. We will continue. Bless God on this business, amen, of family. Family matters. I trust that what I have shared with you this morning has helped you in some way. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Um, uh, before I go, I want to encourage you. We've been having some technical stuff in Jesus' name and we've been encouraging you to sow into the ministry and all of that good stuff. Amen. Bless God. And we have uh, just uh, installed a particular platform that you can give uh, into the ministry if you so desire bless the lord we told you what we are doing we are going to commute the church from the cyberspace to a physical spot and we have begun to um to acquire all the physical infrastructure amen bless god and if this ministry is blessing you if you are receiving spiritual things paul told the galatians you have a responsibility to reciprocate amen if you are receiving spiritually, reciprocate, amen, physical things. I want to encourage you to sow into the ministry at your own free will, please. At your own free will, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. So, you can go to FundMeTNT. FundMeTNT. Bless the Lord. Amen. In fact, on, the, on my page there, you will see on the flyer, you will see the new link. You just click on the link and you go into the site and you follow the prompts and you can make your donation there and you will see what is taking place. You will see, um, you know, uh, you know what, what's, what's, what's been given and all of that. You will see it in Jesus' name. If this is, you know, you, you, you will live outside of, the, of, of Trinidad and Tobago and you prefer to use some of the other um, 
platforms and so on it is simpler for you just send me a message i'll tell you how you can do that in jesus name if you live of course in trinidad and tobago locally there is an account number there on this on the flyer as well amen bless god that you can take advantage of but we really would like you to give let me pray for you amen i want to pray over your gifts as well in jesus name father we give you thanks this morning for the opportunity to share from the word of the lord I thank you for every person that converged on the platform this morning. I pray that the information shared will help the people to make better decisions. We want to have better relationships. We certainly do not have superior knowledge on these matters, but we try to share what we have experienced and what you have helped us to learn in Jesus' name. I pray that you will touch them even as they give gifts to the ministry, that you will touch their hearts and you would reciprocate that every seed sown that there will be immediate uh, uh, returns on those seeds in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. You touch each heart. You know what to put in people's heart to sow. We just give you praise and thanks for doing that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless every single one of you. Thank you for joining me this morning. Amen for our devotion time. Amen. We're going to meet again tomorrow the lord's willing bless god and we continue with family matters i'm gone god bless you bye bye talk to you soon